Welcome to the Weird and the Weary. I'm Jason. With me is Kevin. Good morning. And Lee Noble. Hey. How's everybody doing? Absolutely wonderful. Fantastic. We, we, we just had a little holiday, right? We just had a little holiday. Halloween just yeah. passed by. So, sure. Uh, yeah, it's pretty spoopy. Merry Christmas, everyone. Happy Christmas. Because right, that's what we go right to is Christmas, oh, right? Yeah, I heard it on the way here. They already had it on the radio. There we go. Yeah, like you probably heard a little Mariah, right? A little, or, uh, you know, All I Want for Christmas is You, maybe? I don't even remember what song it was. It, they all sound the same. Yeah, to, whatever. To me, anyway. It's like Christmas. It's one big song. Yeah, and then some, some tambourine yeah. and, like, <laughs> some bells. Jingle and, bell bops. Right. All I Want for Christmas is You. <laughs> and and where we are, we're having some wildly unseasonable weather. We just had that crazy storm a couple of days ago that, I mean, there's a bunch of trees down now where I am. Oh, yeah? But yep. there was, like, uh, you know, severe wind. And, yep. and, uh, yeah, it was some crazy winds. So a lot of trees down. Kind of warm. Train yeah. services knocked out for, like, the west half of the state. Yeah. yeah. The, the rails must have just got scooped right up. Yeah. wind. Scooped. <laughs> Bloop. Gone. Glad I didn't put my leaves to the curb yet. Right, because they'd be right back on your yard. Oh. <laughs> yep. Somebody else's yard. Look at this. So evenly distributed. What the fuck? Did you guys do any uh, Halloween and stuff? You know, like, you, you, you had the kids? Did you have the kids for Halloween? I did not. They were with their mother, and they were trick or treating, and I was cooking some orange chicken. So Ooh. you were playing, uh, you dressed up as a uh, cook. You were a cook for Halloween. I was a cook for Halloween. Nice, nice. It, 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 what about you, Kevin? Did you do any. Uh, Halloween stuff. Uh, we don't get trick or treaters where I live, okay. so we okay. left town. Oh, nice! Went nice. to New York City to check out that parade. Ah, very good. Yeah, very good. Smart. Check. You left just in case it decided to show up. Yeah, I was like, I'm getting the heck out of here. And I see some facial hair. So, is oh. that part of the costume? Yeah, yeah. When it's like a steampunk inventor man. Ooh, yeah. You always got to have a little facial hair, right? Yeah. Man. Well, they didn't invent razor blades yet. Very true. And, and and like all the automatic steam ones are probably killing everyone. Yeah, they'll just cut your throat. throat. Yeah. So forget it. Rise of lights. <laughs> uh, we I didn't have any trick or treaters. I, I, we some people showed up, and I had my dogs outside to mm-hmm. go do their business, and they yep. started to bark, and the lady like got back in her car and left. <laughs> Bye. So that was it. Um, I didn't Later. see anyone else, and uh, yeah, I I didn't dress up either. Oh, okay. You know, I it scares the dogs, right? Uh, you know, I put on my robe. They start barking at me. Rah, rah, rah. Idiots. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so everybody had a good Halloween. That yeah, sounds good. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah. And yeah, a lot of people like to have a good time on Halloween. You know, a lot of parties. A lot of oh yeah. Of, uh, yeah, I'm sure where you were, it was just a big party. Yeah, pretty know? much yeah. for like a zillion blocks. As far yeah. as I could tell, everyone's just partying. Lots of candy. Everybody's hopped up on candy mm-hmm. and other candies. They got big floats there now. I got sponsored people throwing out Ooh. candy. See, yeah, that'd be cool if you got on one of those. That'd have been really cool. Yeah. Just throw out candy. And yeah, no, it costs like $400 to get on one of those. So. Oh, you have, Oh, you can pay to get on one. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, you got to find a way to capitalize on anything, right? True, true. I mean, if you make that costume perfect, you could, you know, capitalize a little bit on that 400 bucks. Be like, yeah. oh, wow, look at, look at, he looks <laughs> like he just stepped off of a, a balloon <laughs> uh, a ship and he, uh, I mean, look, steam's coming out of his top hat. This is crazy. It's just hot. Right. Seems like everything in this house would just be bronze. Right. That, that's how I Copper. envision like, a, a, somebody who makes a costume that well, that they live that life. Anyway. Yes. Oh, yeah. They just happen to wander around this, the whole the parade. But Kevin, uh, he parks that, that steam bicycle uh, that floats <laughs> in the parking lot and it's tethered. It's really weird. I don't, I, does he save a lot? He doesn't use any gas. It's amazing. I don't know. <laughs> I carpool with him for like a week, but I'm afraid of heights. So, yeah. You know. Well, it's pretty spooky. <laughs> it can be spooky on Halloween because, you know, so, sometimes on Halloween uh, some 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 weird stuff will happen and and we got we got some real crazy people out there too. That's true. You know, um we've been we've been told, you know, don't don't eat the unwrapped stuff. Mhm. But I mean, sometimes I get hungry. Yeah, well, and I'm out. it's already unwrapped. So that's going to be the first one I go for. Right. I'm already sweaty from the costume. I don't want to, like... <laughs> Save uh, me some time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, forget it. Mom, shh. Don't, let's just, don't look. Don't watch. Don't watch as I bite into my Razor Snickers. You know? mm. 
the blood. Oh, it's like good. the ortolan, you know, you mix it together. Yeah. You know, the blood and the Snickers Perfect. and the peanuts and the nougat. It gives me the iron I've been missing. <laughs> you need that when you're walking the, the neighborhood. You, yeah. You, know, you, you get tired, you get fatigued. Sure. Give me your nuts. But Halloween 2001 was a particularly terrible night for the uh, the family of Cindy Song, who, who, was, who was last seen alive wearing a pink rabbit outfit. And, you know, it wasn't like a sexy pink rabbit, like like the trend seems to be nowadays. Everything's sexy these days. There's sexy Mr. Rogers. Did you see that? There's somebody, they, no. The, no, yeah. no, really? Yeah, the, that company. I guess they're, I guess maybe they're famous now for making these brash like costumes. Mm-hmm. Right, but yeah, there was legitimately a sexy Mr. Rogers um, that debuted this year. Wow. That's that's unnecessary. It really is. It's my kind of neighbor. <laughs> I know oh, people McFeely, are... McFeely, huh? You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I know there are people that probably, as soon as the sexy nun outfit came out, there was an uproar, and now it's just like, ah, that's tame now. Oh, yeah. There's a sexy everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, really, there is. And, you know, there is probably a there's sexy pink rabbit. But, yeah. This wasn't the sexy pink rabbit. You know, she, uh, Cindy Song didn't didn't have that kind of personality. You know, the the costume, uh, the bunny ears, and and that little tail she had bought, it, it was cute. You know, it wasn't wasn't uh, was like it was what it, they say was her thing. You know, it was it wasn't like over the top. Was wasn't, wasn't risque. Right, right. It was just kind of like uh, cute little rabbit ears, uh-huh. little bunny ears, little cutie patootie. Yeah, you know, like those cat ears that you have. Oh, or, yes, of yeah. course. Yeah, like well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to mention I. It's fine. I yeah, thought you decided to wear it today. It's fine. No special day. It's the day after Halloween, but hey, it's on. That's cool. His girlfriend opened the door when I knocked, and I, you know, I saw it. Ears. I mean, it's okay. He, I, I just, I bleed the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> and they were leopard print. But <laughs> it's an ocelot, sir. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, now that night, uh, Stacy Pike. Uh, Lisa Kim and and Cindy Song they they all went out and and they had a, a good Halloween Eve yeah they went out they uh, went to a party they had some drinks they they danced uh, till about two a.m. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they went to another uh, friend's house and and they played some video games and uh, you know uh, Stacy who was the designated driver that evening uh, took Cindy home who was you know intoxicated. From from having some fun, mm-hmm. um, that was the last time she saw her friend. Yeah, she she watched her, uh, y- you know, leave the car basically because she left right soon after. And mm. She never saw her go into her apartment. Uh, you know, she didn't weigh around. It was it was really early in the morning. I mean, it's kind of. Still, is kind of your I think kind of your duty to escort the person because. Yeah, you've been drinking, you've been you're drinking. intoxicated. Yeah. Right. You know, At you least could hang fall. out. And you could have sure hurt they... yourself. Yeah. Right. Just watch them walk for a second, maybe. You know, see if they need help walking. Um, Close enough. Good luck. Yeah, bye. I, I got to go home. It's the sun's coming up. I'm very tired. Maybe she's like a vampire. Oh. Hmm. Yeesh. That would be bad. <laughs> Get the stakes. <laughs> Oof, the stakes were high. Oh. Now, now, Cindy, um, who arrived in Virginia when she's about fifteen from South Korea, uh, she she went to she came to America to further her schooling. She's a good student. Uh, she lived with her aunt and uncle, and she was accept, accepted to Penn State University in nice. State College, Pennsylvania. All right, well, yeah, that's that's great. I mean, that's that's a good school. You need you need good grades to get there. So she's she's a she's a diligent student. You know, prior to her disappearance, she was uh, slated to graduate from school in about a few months. Uh, you know, hardworking uh, young lady who had an art major. She held two jobs, and like I said, she had really good grades. And it just wasn't like her to like vanish, you know, and 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 just take off without telling anyone. She was responsible enough to let somebody know, mm-hmm. you know especially if she was going to be gone for a while. Gremlin, <laughs> ghosts. <laughs> Cindy? Cindy. Oh, shit. I, well, I did. That's a Ouija board now over there. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I thought it was a Waluigi board. Uh, it is, actually. It's oh. sexy Waluigi. Ooh. Only. Wow. Yeah. 
Now, however, uh, it took three days for her friends to to call anyone. You know, like that's a that's a long time to wait. That's a that's, that's beyond a long time. And, and a lot of people believe that 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 TV myth of the twenty four hour wait period, you know, to call the police. But that's no, those are police procedurals on TV, people. Right. Yeah, you know, that's what David Caruso tells you. You know, when he makes a, a punny joke. Puts his glasses on. <laughs> right. You, know, you gotta wait 24 hours because this is a convenience car. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah! Whatever the hell. Sorry, this is not much of a convenience to you. For you. Yeah. That, that's what frightens me, man. Because, like, my daughter is about the same age. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Lee, your kids are uh, getting to be that age too yeah. you know like where they're going to be going out and and having fun with their friends and i did, oh yeah cindy didn't show up for the third day i guess we better call the police yeah you know, maybe right. somebody should do something about this oh, I, easy. I mean it's just yeah it amazes me how uh ignorant these these kids are to reality sometimes mm. you know like even, even now you know it's even we have like now we're in that weird generational uh, gap again, right? We have a whole new generation now, right? Is it Z or Z? Yeah, Gen Zs. Gen Zs. Okay, Boomer. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> okay, Gen Boomer. Zs. I can't drink white monsters anymore in public. If, if I get caught doing that, I'm a Boomer. I'm close to being a Boomer, I guess. Right? Oh, no, geez. Generation X. I feel like I'm there. <laughs> Sometimes New York Times says there's no more, there's no more friendliness between the ages now. Right? Okay, boomer. Okay, boomer was the end of it. That's it. Done. I'm gonna cut in front of your line. I'm gonna hit you in the back <laughs> of the legs with every shopping cart I got. <laughs> boomer. Show you, boomer. Now, I mean, Cindy did have like an independent streak. You know, she wasn't like fully like, oh, you know. <laughs> Hey, I'm I'm going shopping Later. today. I'm going, you know, but I mean, she's an adult, man. She's going to going to college. She had her own apartment, mm-hmm. so. but she wouldn't just vanish. She wouldn't just take off and not tell anyone, not call relatives, anyone, or friends, or anything like that. And you know, there's no foul play shown at, at at her at her home. No no forced entry. No no struggle, and uh, you know. Her apartment was was searched. There there was uh, there was a couple clues left behind. Her keys and her purse, driver's license, credit card. They weren't there, but it, her the backpack she'd been wearing that night was there with her cell phone in it. Okay, right. so she made it into the apartment at least that night. Right. I mean, I know it's two thousand one. I mean, but you know, she left her phone. I guess maybe that's kind of forgettable in that era. Yeah. Um, you know, like I think that's around the time I I had my first phone. You know, and I didn't really use it much. Um, yeah, that's about right for me too. I think. Yeah, Play, nice. played a game that cost me a, a quarter each time. Jeez, <laughs> that was like three hundred dollar phone bill. Yeah, I believe that. That's bad. Fucking Sprint, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> they get you. <laughs> oh yeah, and it was just like a rock paper scissors game, man. It was called Gladiator. It was mm-hmm. rock paper scissors. I was playing the kid at work with me. Yeah, so we both had a pretty high phone bill you know, surprise surprise I'm like oh wait, you're, you're you're 19 your credits fuck homie I'm like you're not gonna pay that for a while man. done <laughs> you work you work for radio shack man you make nothing jesus radio shack so sad bye bye but i mean her friends even said that she wouldn't really go anywhere without her phone you know she always had it with her really uh the fake eyelashes she'd been wearing that night were on the counter so, you know, it did show that she came home and, and started getting comfortable, you know, like took off the costume, mm-hmm. um, you know, but I mean, was there somebody like waiting inside for her you know, or um, maybe she didn't close the door all the way. So right. She slipped in. Right. Yeah. You know, she was a little tipsy, left the maybe left the keys in the door. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or it didn't close all the way. Too. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, uh yeah, there's, there's a lot of different scenarios you can think of to, you know, try to piece it together. Um, there was also uh, talk about like her mental state because she just had a breakup with uh, with a boyfriend, and 
you know, they've been living together about a month before she disappeared. Oh, okay. And the, even her family wondered if she might have been, you know, suicidal because of this and taking her life over you know, the, the grief. But her friend said she was in really high spirits that night and didn't really seem to have any kind of, you know, melancholy about her. Nothing mm. seemingly wrong with her. And, you know, depression does hide its head. I mean, it's not always, you know, you're not always expressing, you know, that you're sad. Right. You know, but, Look at Robin Williams. Right. You know, uh, you just, I guess you never know. But it, it just didn't seem, you know, like she would do something like that. She was even in therapy and, and, and taking medication. You know, she was keeping her mental health you know, in check, you know, it seemed, yeah, it doesn't sound like she was ignoring it. She's doing everything you got to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So she might've been there at one point, but she definitely seemed to be trying to handle it. Yeah. But, but cops did assume that she had just taken a little stroll outside, you know, forgot her phone, went to the convenience store. Um, but you know, other clues planned that she wasn't going anywhere. Like, uh, a receipt for a computer that was coming. Um, you know, there's also a ticket for uh, uh, the Britney Spears concert that was was coming up. Um, and, you know, it was like... I feel like if she was going out to the corner store, she probably would have remembered at least, like, her phone or money or keys or something. Oh, no, no. She no, no, that, yeah, she had, yeah, the, oh, she had everything. Right. She had the... the Scrap hat. Yeah. Right, I mean, it's just, she's a young kid, and these phone things are kind of, you know, like, 2001, kids were texting each other. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. like, you know, we, we weren't texting people. Is that like the era of T9 Word? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that was before they really became <laughs> smartphones, too. Yeah. Right, <clears throat> just right, you know, like these razors and stuff. You Ooh, know, paying flippies, for ringtones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Polyphonic. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, back in the day, yeah, like three ninety nine a ringtone too, Whew. or the 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 dancing frog. Yeah, give me that crazy frog. Great crazy, crazy frog. Oh, <laughs> ring, 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 bong, ring. And now we're gonna get sued soon. That's <laughs> <laughs> it, it. Just didn't add up. I mean, uh, you would think, okay, get these fucking eyelashes off of me. Oh crap, I need a drink. <laughs> you know, like. She still had her bag with her. I, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like she would take off her bag just to go down you know, the street. It wasn't it didn't seem like it was that far away, the convenience store from her apartment. Mm. Um, well, she may have, like, you know, thrown a bag down, taken the eyelashes off, realized she needed to go to the store and just, you know, forgot her bag. Right. Right. You know, either way, I mean, something happened. If it didn't happen in the home, she could have been taken while she was going on the stroll. You know, I mean, it's, um, so her costume wasn't there though, right? So she disappeared in the costume. Still? Right. Yeah. yeah. The costume was, was, I mean, the only thing that part of the costume were the, uh, fake eyelashes that gotcha. were on the counter. Um, you know, so it, it's, yeah. Uh, you know, but then a few days after this investigation began, uh, a strange account was recorded about 200 miles away from her apartment, uh, in Philadelphia's Chinatown district. Uh, an eyewitness recounted seeing a woman that fit her uh, Cindy's description, and she was crying and, and pleading for help. And the eyewitness stated that the woman was yelling and crying when a man shoved her into a car. And the eyewitness tried to intervene, but the man was told to mind her own business and, and took off. But this wound up being a dead end as the uh, the witness's uh, details started to change and the story started changing, going nowhere. Um, you know. Which happens a lot with with these cases, you know. People pick up on it, try to. Oh, well, I want to be involved. Yeah, you know, it's like like the psychics, <laughs> like Long Island Medium, you know, like <laughs> I don't know. I mean, just for example, Gary Spivey with the the big hair helmet. Or even to think even darker. What if the, the person was followed up with, and they were like, "Listen, you don't say anything. You say anything, you're dead." Yeah, and they changed up their story. They were threatened. Oh, mm-hmm. I didn't even think about that. I didn't, yeah, jeez. Two. Good thing I'm not an investigator. Right. Or or an eyewitness. At, you know, at this point. Um, mm. uh, 
I saw nothing. Now the Song family, they they they, they came in and uh, from Seoul and. And they got to Cindy's apartment, and they started to clean it and pack everything up and destroying a lot of evidence. Um, you know, they might not have destroyed all the evidence, but cleaning up the place and stuff, I mean, definitely yeah, disturbed. That, that'll definitely interfere with an investigation. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um you know, I don't know if that's like custom to just you know to come right away and. I think so. Clean up, yeah, right. It's possible, know, right? You know, because uh, if you don't within a certain amount of time, they may not be at rest or something like that. Right. Oh. I mean, cause literally. I mean, like there's a timer on your fans in South Korea because there's a belief that the fans will oh, suck yeah, all the air out of they'll you. They'll get you in the middle of the night, right. hmm. so it'll shut. They'll shut off. So I, I I don't know. I might be talking my ass about the cleanup time after post postmortem, but it might not be. I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to keep busy. They're too worried. Right. You know, anything to yeah, I mean maybe yeah. You know, just to Pass the pack time. up the grief and yeah. get, get the you know, any yeah, something. And you know, and the family they, they accused the uh the Ferguson Township uh police department of not doing enough to try and find her. Um you know, there was a, uh, like, a search party. There was, like, you know, efforts to find her. I mean, it, it you know, it, it's, t- it's terrible. I mean, you you want answers, you know, but then there's a lot of finger pointing, you know, like, you disturbed evidence, and you're not doing enough, and, you know, it's mm. it's terrible. It's a terrible time for everyone. But like, uh, Penn State students, they, they set up a coalition for the search for Cindy's song, and... um People were saying that they they felt that her race was was a factor in in not finding her, and uh, you know I mean there's probably there is a lot of truth to that. I mean you you, you see it a lot. You know the minorities mm. go missing, and you see you know some 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 white person or goes missing. I mean I don't know. It's sensationalized because like there's even like. The uh, Natalie Holloway went missing, and and uh, I can't remember her name. I don't even know if I should even mention it, you know. But like, you know, this, you know, but uh, like high profile, most of the time you see like a, a like a middle class, upper middle class white girl before you see a minority on on like the Today Show or, or anything bigger than the local news, right? You yeah. know, so I, I I don't really disagree with with how they feel about that. Um. You know, the police eventually stopped contacting the family. Um, this was according to news.com.au, um, and, and, and out of retaliation um, for what was being said about the local police and state college and um, how the investigation just, you know, wasn't thorough enough. So they believe that, yeah, the, it, you know, the cops retaliated with just silence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't think we're doing anything well, here. we'll show you what doing yeah. nothing is great thanks cool perfect thanks, thanks state college police that's awesome good, uh, good move but in 2003 um there was a break in the case uh, an informant by the name of paul weekly he claimed that uh, a fellow named hugo Selensky, uh Selensky, a career criminal and and another uh uh person uh, michael krakowski who's a pharmacist who was running an illegal drug ring uh saw a song thinking that she was a prostitute and they all took her to uh Selensky's where um where he said that they violated her over several days and and imprisoned her in a vault and let, left her to die fucking choice people here yeah that sounds terrible yeah this is you know these, yeah, these are just the the bottom of society here. Uh, when police swarmed into the location that that was provided, and they discovered that they they found a found serial killer. They found a mass graveyard. Over a dozen bodies were found, Ugh. and uh, two of the bodies that were found belonged to uh, Michael Krakowski and his girlfriend Tammy Fassett. Oh, little. little uh, you know, interesting there that one one of his own yeah fell victim to his own secret hideout for bodies and junk yeah 
Well, apparently, uh, Selinski murdered the two of them because they, they kept Song's bunny ears, which they, uh, you know, kept as a trophy. That, that, that really angered him. That made him mad enough to kill them both. And, uh, sounds a little weird. I mean, I guess if you're part of a murder network drug ring, um... Yeah, I don't really know what the triggers are at that point anymore. Right, <laughs> right. Because he could have provided, you know, some, some of the wrong drugs. So, you know, the pharmacy just runs out of shit. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> this isn't Viagra. Oh, fuck, man. It's yeah. go time. But but uh, Paul's story started to fall apart after this, uh, this evidence was found. And uh, the motivator was really uh, $60,000 Krakowski kept at his house. And Weekly admitted to helping him to helping kill the couple. And investigators searched Weekly's computer and, and found numerous articles about Cindy Song's disappearance. And uh, investigations uh, which led him to believe he's either looking up info for other false evidence uh, in, in hopes of a lighter sentence or, you know, you know, something more terrible that he actually was the murderer of Cindy Song. You know, he had articles and clippings, uh, souvenirs of her death, and, you know, as souvenirs of her death. And uh, he kind of used those those graveyards as like a, like a red herring. You know? That's Jeez. a possibility. You never know. Sounds like he delivered the story pretty weakly. Oh. Mm. I mean, yeah, and his, you know, his integrity was, was weakly. Nice. And, I, you know, it, it's hard to say. I mean, somebody like this definitely sounds like the profile of, of a, a murderer who would just kill some young lady. Um, yeah, I mean, without he, any remorse, he could have been looking at all this stuff like, yeah, look how much press time I'm getting right now. Right. Hmm. You know, I'll be famous in prison. So who cares? Three squares and a, and a star above my name. Or my, or my tattooed on me. Mm. Oh, man. Second sickness. Now, now, as of today, uh, Selensky and weekly, they're both serving life sentences for, uh, for separate murders. And this the song case it's still unsolved as uh, we've just passed the 18th anniversary of her, of her disappearance. Hmm. You know, I, I mean, that's nuts to me that even if he didn't kill her, that he would take the time to make it look like you know he did. You know, and because uh, they you know they never found her body in the other in that mass grave, right? Um. Or if it was just like a special case, you know, like, I don't know. And Well, it was Weekly saying that Kurkowski and Hugo killed her. Right. You know, Weekly had nothing to do with that. He admitted to killing the couple. But Right. I mean, yeah, so not knowing much about Kurkowski either. Right. You know, it's, it's hard to say. And, uh, he could have just pinned on him saying anything because he, he, he already knew he was dead. Right. Yeah insane i just you know i can't believe that one tragedy would lead to a dozen other tragedies you know, <laughs> or, you know i mean i yeah. guess it's kind of a good thing they found and arrested the other folk but right. geez that's a shitty way to find out yeah yeah one of the worst ways really i mean uh, i really hope they they come to some conclusion you know, to this this story um and you know, Halloween obviously isn't without its its uh, its tragedies. Apparently, uh, back in 1974 in Deer Park, Texas, uh, Ronald Clark O'Brien he was out uh, supervising his two children, uh, eight year old Timmy and five year old Elizabeth, along with uh, his neighbor Jim Bates and and his son. Uh, as they're out trick or treating, they approached a house with the lights off. But they decided to knock anyway. Now, I turn my lights off because, I mean, honestly, I don't really do the trick-or-treating thing really well. Okay. Uh, so, uh, usually I just turn the lights off. Fair enough. Um, that makes sense. Right. This year, I had a little bowl of candy. I've eaten most of it. So, oh, perfect. Because they, they, the dogs scared everyone away. I would have dumped that whole bag, you know, right in the kids. <laughs> First kid that yeah. shows up. You're the only kids, I think. You know, the weather was really bad anyway. Um, you know, but, uh, when the lights are off, generally it means we're not home, 
There's no candy. Go away. Yeah, right. just get out of here. Right. Unless there's like flashing lights and shit and it's spooky. spooky looking. Right. Then you're supposed to walk up and somebody's supposed to jump out in a moss costume and make you piss your pants. Oh, you perfect. <laughs> or, or, the, or the guy dressed up as the uh, scarecrow jumps out at you. Oh, yeah. I did that. I got, I got hit by one of the parents. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. I was like 12. <laughs> 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 Told my buddy, like, I don't want to be at the scarecrow anymore. Yeah. yeah. I'm done. He even had like his had a microphone and speakers and shit. He was like talking to it when people come up, take candy, <laughs> put echo on there. It was pretty cool. Uh, until I got hit. Yeah, yeah. But um, so yeah, they kept banging on the door and and you know these kids were probably eating. It's not seventy four. I mean, they're mm. probably just eating the candy, whatever. I'm empty uh, again. There's no stranger danger yet. Just keep eating candy you know a lot of sugar so yeah they just kept beating on the door no answer and uh something wrong with this house dad <laughs> there ain't no candy coming out <laughs> you think they're deaf so the, the kids and jim they, they took off mm -hmm. and uh ronald decided he was he was gonna stay because they ain't gonna put a bowl out i'm just gonna you know i want my candy where is the candy <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a few moments later, he ran up to the group with uh, a 21-inch long pixie stick, stating that someone came to the door and gave him gave him this big old pixie stick. Oh, there five of them. Set five of them. Sorry. Oh, sorry. There he Because yeah. they do have the big ones. Yeah. No, no, they were five 21-inch ones. Oh, five of them. Yeah. Wow. Right. He's like, oh, surprise, they didn't get to the door because they're busy. <laughs> pulling these things out. Yeah, they were up in the attic for a while. Yeah, you know, like whoops. We like to give these big, long pixie sticks. I mean, I've I've had these big pixie sticks. Sure, yeah. yeah. And I've seen them at raves, too, you know, but they had other things in them. Not sugar. <laughs> um. So, yeah, they're they, they like, great. Finally, you know, I knew it would pay off beating, beating <laughs> on that, that door. Never bustin', give up. Busting, busting, busting. And uh, they just kept going on, you know, trick-or-treating. Timmy, he he was allowed one treat before he he uh, was you know went to bed, so he chose that that pixie stick man. That's yep. a big fucking pixie stick. Smart kid. Long, long man. <laughs> <laughs> now go go right to bed after eating twenty one inches of sugar. Uh, yeah, good luck, man. You're gonna be up for a fucking day and a half. You know, but uh, Timmy had some trouble getting the candy out of the tube. Which is a little distressing because a pixie stick is just powdered sugar, you know, just granular <laughs> sugar with with some dye in it, right? Know, a little bit of flavor. So, <laughs> um, now th these sticks have been like crudely stapled on the top, but you know it was a firm staple, so I guess it was good enough. Seventy four things were different, right? Just... <laughs> <laughs> things were different back then. The standards were different. Survival Things lasted. Toys. <laughs> toys were made out of die cast and lead, <laughs> and we liked it. We liked it. Paint, asbestos, and lead in the paint. It's fine. Just tough guy stuff back then. Yeah, you get cut on one of those staples. So what? Suck your finger. Just made you a tougher person. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Ronald helped him. They they got it open and they ate some of it. And uh, it was bitter. So, yeah. You know, if it's bitter, it's a spit, right? You know, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Taking some something, you know, weird and it's bitter, it's a spit. Right? Yeah, I'm going to say I haven't had a pixie stick in a while, but I don't remember them being bitter. No, yeah. no way. Like a little tang, yeah, but mostly sweet. Yeah. It's just like poo tang. <laughs> Pooty tang. So Timmy was eating some of this pixie stick. It's a little bitter. So Ronald uh, took it, and he promptly went to the kitchen, and he uh, gave him some Kool Aid. <laughs> did he, now, did he put the pixie stick in the Kool Aid? I hope that'd be the smart thing to do. <laughs> no, he didn't. A little bit of Kool Aid before bed. <laughs> All right, Jim. This is before Jim. Maybe this is where Jim got the idea. <laughs> Totally like the seven, yeah. Totally seven. You know, Kool Aid. I think it's kind of new, right? In the seventies, right? No, I think it's sixties. 
<laughs> Maybe <a bit> earlier. <laughs> Fucking Kool Aid mustache forever, probably. <laughs> Go to bed. Oh yeah. <laughs> you like that purple drink, boy? Well, this is the last time Tim would ever drink Kool Aid because Timmy died that night. Uh, he died vomiting and fucking screaming. Yeah. Uh, which seems more like a like you know, like like a poisoning, like the like the dreaded Halloween poisoning. And uh, former Harris County prosecutor Mike Hinton, he was on the police intake the night of Timmy's death. He received the call from the uh, Pasadena police that an eight year old had died. Hinton contacted Chief Medical Examiner Joseph Jamizic. Uh, explained the situation, and the doctor asked what the boy's breath smelled like. And a quick call to the morgue revealed it smelled like almonds. And once the doctor was given that info, he stated cyanide. The boy was just killed with cyanide. Ugh. Autopsy proved that to be correct. And the test uh, found in the tubes, uh, the tube had enough cyanide to kill two people. In just two inches, that was packed inside the tube. Uh, police gathered the other four tubes from the before the other kids ate them, because you know, I guess they let them keep these fucking things. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Was it the Kool Aid? I mean, come on, man! Uh, you know, although one of them had been uh, saved by a, a stubborn staple, good good stapling job on the part of these. Uh, yeah, good work. These fucks, you know. So. Uh, do they like call around to the other parents? Anything weird happen to your kid tonight? <laughs> Did you get any pixie sticks from that dark house? The one that was painted black with the bars on the windows, you know? Straight out of nightmares. Yeah, the one that lightning always <laughs> flashes over for some reason. Yeah, with the fifth one there, though, the parents are freaked out. They ran upstairs because they said their son had brought one up to his bedroom. And he was going to eat it. And he was sound asleep with it in his hand. He couldn't get it open. That Mother. was a stubborn one. Jesus. Yeah. They were hysterical. Well, staple save lives. Yeah, apparently. Uh, police brought Ronald to the neighborhood that, uh, you know, around where they got this pic- these pixie sticks of death and uh, see if he could recall the location. But but he couldn't. He had trouble uh, remembering. But but with more pressure and, and firmness, he, he did recall eventually. Yeah, the police pressured him. They were like, come on now, man. Right. I mean, I understand, you know, this is horrible grief time, but... You got to buck up, man. You got to find this fuck. You got to find this this horrible fucker, you know. And uh, the police thought they'd solve the case, you know. Just, but yeah, it sounds pretty open and shut. Yeah, spooky nightmare house, right? Handing out poison, done. Easy, done. I read To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> I didn't read the full thing, but I know Boo Radley was an evil guy. Yeah, I saw that movie. All right, all right, now. <laughs> I read the whole thing. Sorry. I, I had to. You lied to me. Sorry. <laughs> kind of mean to. Damn it. I got to stop trusting strangers. Boo Radley, though, the owner of the house, uh, you know, he had he had an alibi. He, he'd been working that night, and his wife and daughter were home, but they had run out of candy prior to uh, Ronald the Entourage arriving and turned the lights off, and they didn't answer the door. So, I agree. You don't answer the door when the light. You don't knock on the door when the lights are off. That's right. You don't answer the motherfucking door when the lights are off. Yeah. And if you're going to keep knocking, well, I'll feed you rock salt. Ooh. I'll come out and I'll start clocking. Nice. I got rock salt. Rock salt knuckles. You keep knocking, I'll come clocking. That's right. <laughs> that rocks. Especially now. <laughs> <laughs> you come knocking now for candy, motherfucker, man. Like, come on. It's 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 November. <laughs> What the hell? <laughs> come the fuck knock, out of here. Come knocking, you won't get a rockin'. What do you mean I dressed up like Chewbacca? I've never seen Monsters Incorporated, okay? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Chewbacca's not blue? What? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Hinton, he became suspicious, and he started to dig a little deeper into this. And... Uh, Ronald had been angry at his family for not staying up to watch a video of him being broadcast late at night. Like, <laughs> watch me on the news talking about our dead <laughs> Timmy. That, yeah, come on, everybody. Let's sit together and eat some candy. Come on, it's going to be after the colostomy bag commercial. You know the medical supply thing. Watch. I got these good pixie sticks, though. These are good ones. These are really good. They're 22 inches. They're Ooh. real. Special occasions. You can tell by the staples that they're good. <laughs> 
And, uh, you know, it had been a, a, a song in the, in the memory of Timothy. Uh, and now when, when the police officers approached Tintin with info that Ronald had taken a life insurance policies on both of his kids, and uh, he had about $100,000 in debt. So, uh, hmm. I don't know. I don't think you need, like, too much of an investigation. Uh, well, you got to get it all the way. I mean, well, you got enough to, to start tying a loop. You know, I mean. That's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> we need evidence. Objection. You know, no. <laughs> Overruled. A judge didn't grant a warrant, and Ronald's home was searched. Uh, sadly enough, a pair of scissors with cyanide residue was found on the premises. He was just for opening the pixie sticks, right? Uh, right. Right. But, uh... Because <laughs> he's a good dad. Yeah. Yeah. Good daddy. Further investigation uh, brought about at the time when Ronald had asked uh, a professor in his class, he attended a local community college, what had proved more lethal? Cyanide or some other poison? And another witness in Houston claimed a man came in to buy a small amount of cyanide from his store, but left after being told he couldn't buy anything under five pounds. Five pounds of cyanide. <laughs> so you can only buy it in bulk? Yeah. That seems safer. Sure. I mean, you know, I've had a mouse problem uh, out in the country, so I don't know if I need five pounds. Maybe. What are you trying to kill, elephant? I know, right? Jeez, man. Like, kill all the mice in like 10 miles? Like, what? I'm an exterminator. <laughs> now, the, the owner of the uh, the cyanide store, he couldn't really remember Ronald specifically, but he did remember him wearing some sort of lab coat. And uh, that matched Ronald's profession as a, you know, sewer scientist. No, he was an, he's an optician. Ah. So. Sewer scientist. He, he studied shit. Now I can kind of see all this coming together. Right. You probably said Ronald on, you know, monogrammed on his on his lapel. Ron. Ronnie. Uh, he maintained his innocence in DNA, uh, as, you know, we didn't have DNA testing in 1974. Um, what? Why not? What are you guys doing? I don't know. We're just <laughs> Just inventing it. Jeez. <laughs> Just creating DNA oh. <laughs> out of thin air. Uh, so in, in, but in June 3rd, 1975, he was found guilty and uh, sentenced to death by electric chair. I mean, it only took 45 minutes for a jury to decide that uh, Ronald was going to die. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Got shit to do that today. Uh, right. They're probably busy searching all their kids' candy. Yeah, fair mm. enough. Uh, he would appeal for nearly a decade, but he exhausted all possible ways to appeal. And uh, he skipped the electric chair. He, he got lethal injection, 1984, March 31st, 1984. Um, because at this point, the electric chair was unnecessarily cruel. No longer use it as an option. Well, at least he appealed his way out of the chair. Mm. Yeah, good for him. Good for him. Uh you know, but you know, from an unsolved mystery to one that thankfully was, Halloween, it always have some kind of, you know, tainted history. Because, um, you know, it was a pagan thing first, right? Samhain, right? So, mm. You know, like all religion, really. Um, you know, but... <laughs> they had to adjust it so that the pagans would accept it. Right. It's, it's still your day, you but it's our holiday. Right, because we killed a lot of you. A lot of you. We've shown grace and, and forgiveness. Right, we're letting some of you live. Look at me. This is my religion now. Another one where you get naked? <laughs> That's for Jesus now, okay? Ooh. Clothe yourself for Jesus. Right. The one where you celebrate the moon? What, was it Samhain? Yeah, candy and pumpkins. Ooh, and, spooky. And later, mm. spice. It's pumpkin spice. So. Perfect. <laughs> Becky's. <laughs> That's the scariest thing. You know, but it, wh whether it's, uh, you know, why there's some kind of weird, spooky, fucking cruel shit people do on Halloween or, you know, it's important to fight against this kind of like cruelty and evil, you know, look out for your, 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 your friends and, you know, cause there's people out there that'll just disregard life, man. They just don't view life the same as we do it's just not a 
you know, sociopaths and and, and uh, people like that. You know, they just don't see life the same as most people. It's, it's like a darkness that'll kind of uh, you know they're haunted. Yeah, they are haunted. They're very haunted. You know, and then, and like there's people that are in prison, like the guy who claimed he killed Cindy's song. You know, I mean, he's haunted with other murders, and maybe that one too. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, jeez, I didn't know anyone was actually ever uh, poisoned. I thought it was just an urban legend. Kids getting poisoned in their candy. Yeah, maybe this is probably one of the foundations of it. Yeah, probably. I think there was another case where someone was. Um... Someone did ingest candy with a needle in it, or something like that, or mm-hmm. they were stuck. But it's not it's not as frequent as people would, you know, impress upon people. Right. We had the Tylenol poisonings, you know, in the eighties. Oh, I just learned about those like a couple months ago. Yeah, was... we'll do. We should do a show about that yeah. coming up. You know, I mean, that one still unsolved, I believe, or was it something just came of it? I was believe. that arsenic? Yeah, yeah, and wow. Tylenol. I just wow. googled it because I was mad trying to open up the seal. <laughs> you couldn't poke your finger through yeah it's like a stupid yeah. thing why is this ruining my life right now i just cut my nails you know? <laughs> but yeah i mean it's i mean there's a lot of sick fucks out in this world i mean we got i mean there was there was a time it was covered up for a while but there was a, a beech nut uh baby fact baby food factory mm-hmm. and janitorial staff like they were doing some demolition cleanup and they dumped all the fucking like paint chip shit oh, into yeah. the batcher for the the baby formula and they didn't release that for like 3 weeks and that was local to where my grandparents lived uh. you know so like it was on the local news and then it was like gone and then it became national news real quick you know but like even shit like that they try to cover that up yeah, like someone yeah. leaked that out they had to yeah they yeah. needed to. Yeah, this is like 87, 88 or something, mm-hmm. you know, like, because it was getting shipped out with fucking lead chips in, in this baby cereal. Might have been an accident. I don't really know this, the whole story of it. Uh, just complete negligence. But, uh... Damn, some people suck. Yeah. But by and by, you know, it Halloween is really like one of those few innocent holidays that we have. You know, like hollow, Halloween, you you dress up, you get you, you get candy. Yep. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's about the gist of it, right? You know, uh, the rest of the time it's uh, like I mean Christmas, everybody's like, "What are you getting me?" You know, or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Give me my presents. Reason for the season, shit too. You know, like there's both both sides of that avenue. Easter, if you believe in zombies, great. I don't know. I mean. <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm just knocking on all, all this shit, but it really is. It's, it's just, a, a... yeah, it's like the low stakes yeah. holiday. like the one of the last ones. Right. You know, I was here I heard stories about like a home invasion be- on Halloween, you know, because you open the door for somebody wearing a mask, mm-hmm. you know, like, well, that was the original thing is that, you know, it was trick or treat. It's like, you know, you give us something. Or were you going to do something? Ooh, it's a threat. Yeah, it's just like that's what the poor people would do because it was near Thanksgiving and they knew people were getting ready to have relatives and all that. So it's like, I get you. So I believe that was in England. Like the small town I, you know, went to high school at. Uh, like the second or yeah, second year I was there, they they stopped selling eggs in the whole month of October. <laughs> oh, so unless you're in houses, unless you're eighteen, you had to, you had to have an ID. And you could only buy eggs if you're 18. So, like, wow. <laughs> my mom needs fucking eggs, you know? Like, I'm going to go to the store for my mom. But, no. On selling to you. Yeah, I had to, like, go out of town to go buy eggs. Yo, man, you got them good eggs. Right, yeah, I go, oh, I know a farmer up the road. <laughs> and some of them are rotten. Some of them got little baby <laughs> chicks inside. Some of them are rotten. <laughs> throw some fucking baloo at you bitches, you know? <laughs> the fuckers. Yeah, I don't know, man. But it really, it's yeah, it's one of the last innocent things this this country has, you know. And uh... <laughs> so maybe, uh, so maybe we should keep an eye on some of our neighbors, try to stop people from disappearing or getting poisoned. Yes, and uh, I, I mean, a lot of it, I believe, is a fallacy. Like, also, like that shit about like THC candy getting mixed in with your, uh, you know, like 
Ain't nobody got money for yeah, that shit. Dude, man, fucking ten edibles for fifty expensive. dollars, bitch. Hell out I of here. Fucking get out of here, you stupid little kids. I, I, I ain't getting any of that. No. No, you're getting wizard candy. That's what you get. <laughs> fucking, you're getting the cheapest shit I can buy. Here's some sixlets, man. Here's some fucking Necco wafers. Here, have some fruit stripe. Enjoy ten seconds of your life. Yeah. Aww. Aww. <laughs> This is so good. Uh, <laughs> damn it. The flavor is so powerful. Gone. What's the other one? <laughs> the Hubba Bubba. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, bu- bubble gi- bubble Yum. Bubble Bubblicious. Yeah, yeah, all that shit. Yeah, it's just like... Um, 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 um. <laughs> <laughs> or do all five at once. The gum asm. Yeah. Ooh. Five pieces of grape. Five oh. pieces of watermelon. Oh, that's 30 oh. seconds. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to eat the rest of that candy I have. Do it. Let's do it. Because now I'm sad. And uh, Halloween's over. Yeah. So. so. Well, I'm not going to keep it until next year. Right. Well, you're going to see it all around your offices. You know, you're going to get. Oh, that's true. Yep. I'm like, here, take some candy. Everybody's going to. You're going to hear that. You're going to be told that at least seven times or eight times a week. Just here, take some candy. And it's going to be all mm-hmm. the shit. It's going to be Almond Joys. It's going to be the fucking worst shit. And get out I here like with... Almond Joys. Now we know who the. Never mind. I make an Almond Joy cookie. <laughs> okay, I, mean, I could get down with that. But I don't actually put Almond Joy in there. It's just it's an Almond Joy inspired cookie. The deconstructed Almond Joy. <laughs> yeah. It's got coconut. It's got the almonds in there. Mm-hmm. Chocolate chips. It's good shit. Or like those AM, AMSR videos of the guys making. He has a Cold Stone. For like Cold Stone Creamery. Okay. And he makes different ice cream blends. He did like a hamburger. And he did like uh, a <laughs> Cornetto cone. <laughs> Oh. Did like a McDonald's hamburger with vanilla ice cream. Oh my yeah. goodness, I couldn't. So that's what I'm going to go watch. I'm going to go out of here. I'm going to go home and watch that shit. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. All right, let's go. I'm going to I'm going to see if I can find some of that discount candy. Oh, good luck. Thanks. Because I went on I went on Halloween night yeah. to get a few little bags at my grocery store. That whole aisle was wiped out, gone. Oh. Chief. And I found just a few select of the uh, high name brand, yeah, like, like you know Reese's and, and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But none of like the big bags of like blow pops and shit. You know, it was all like so. It was like six dollars for two little bags of of candy. I didn't expect anybody, so I bought the ones I liked: mm-hmm. you know, Reese's and Kit Kats. Smart, good shit. Yeah, the good candy, you know, good stuff, highbrow stuff. <laughs> well, let's go get it. I'm hungry. Yeah, yeah. Get for sweets. So be good to yourselves, be good to everyone, watch your friends, be good to your friends, you know, just stay with your friends if you're out partying, you know, if you're dropping them off at night, get them to the door, make yeah. sure they get to the just door, make sure, make sure they're, they're inside, you know, uh, close the door behind them, yeah, make sure they don't do a backslide, now don't slip, they hurt, don't wait three days, if your friend's missing, you know, to call someone, yeah, urban legend, the 48 hours, don't do that, yeah, it's bullshit, 24, urban 24, they're all urban legends, yeah. Call your friends nonstop. That's right. <laughs> even even when they're sleeping. Just to know that they're there. I mean, I, I, I just worry about you. I don't do that to my friends, but you do it to yours. That's totally fine. Okay. I'll call your friends. Okay, cool. I'll give them the same my content. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Get this online, www.weirdandweary.com. You have anything you want to share, any kind of stories, anything like that? Info at weirdandweary.com. Kevin Jason Lee, weirdandweary.com, at, at symbol in there. That's all of our emails. And uh, catch us also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. And maybe we'll start doing some TikTok videos. Oh, I hope. I think you should start doing that. Oh, perfect. That's what I'm thinking. I was thinking of just doing some cooking ones. I'll start with that. I might actually get rid of Facebook. So... Um, that might get rid of our Facebook page, too. Something to discuss later. Who knows? I don't know. Not that anybody even sees it. I think I'm the one who has the most views on it. So. Mm. I, I don't it's my know. homepage. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> I type Google in the Google search bar, too. Yeah. Nice. Okay, nice. boomer. <laughs> Out of the boomer. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Jason. I'm Kevin. And I am Lee. And I'm going to eat candy. I'm going to eat. Oh, I'm going to eat like a Kit Kat. Yeah, do you like have any Reese's and a Kit Kat underneath? Like Ooh, like a, like a Kit Kat sandwich. sandwich yeah. And then just like roast it over a little fire. I don't like the sound of that. It's just going to goop everywhere. I want some. In your hands. 
I want some peanut M&M's. I want to stuff it inside a croissant, put it in the toaster, and then eat it. Oh, wow. That sounds too much Let's for me. Let's do this shit. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot. I just want some chili Reese's. <laughs> oh. Cold ones, not chili. I think really like chili con- carny Reese's. That sounds disgusting. Do you really have Let's any make candy it. loaf? JKL Mania. Jekyll.